if you enjoyed this presentation, please remember to hit like and subscribe to the channel. The churchyard pool was an unassuming stretch of water on Tolkien's D-beat on the River Spey. Sandwiched between the fast water of the stream of Crag and Moor and the equally turbulent steading, both of which will tire salmon travelling upstream. It's really no surprise that the churchyard pool can be a prolific place to find resting salmon. My first memories of the churchyard pool was fishing here with then gilly Robert Mitchell. I encountered a large salmon, definitely in the high teens, on a sunray in the glassy water just opposite the boat bay. The fish lunged upwards fully out of the water and I could clearly see the fly caught in its lower jaw. What followed could only be described as mayhem. The fish was a worthy opponent. It fought like a demon for a good ten minutes, but with a strong flick of its tail, it was gone. It's one of those memories every salmon angler has. A feeling of desperation at that moment. But over time the bitterness fades and a sense of victory pursues. The enjoyment of the take, the battle, and the fact the fish was lost are not memories that disappear. They only become enhanced. I cannot approach the churchyard pool without memories of that day. As my fly glides over the patch of glassy water, my body tightens, my heart beats, and I just wait for that pool. I've learned over my years salmon fishing to take a short break before entering a new pool and try not to rush in. I look for the streams in the river, the lies and ripples that might provide shelter for my quarry. I check my setup that everything is tight, lined up and ready to go. This is not the time for my gear to fail. I'm on a full floating line with just a five foot hover tip, a size 12 kitchen sink dress double. I'm going to be fishing just inches under the surface at most. I've worked my way down the pool and I'm past the boat. I've seen a few fish moving below me. They look restless and they may not hang around here too long. I think they've come up through the crag and moor and are resting this side of the croy at the tail of the pool. I send out a long searching cast hoping to entice one onto my fly. I like the speed of the water and the swing of the fly as it glides across the pool. It seems to just hang in the tail where the salmon are lying. I see a fish boil at it, but there's no connection this time. I've judged the angle and the pace right, and the fish are uncomfortable with my fly in their presence. They're agitated. This is a good sign. It's intense. I'm nervous but staying focused. I have the feeling that something's going to happen here. Everything is lined up perfectly. I feel sure it's only a matter of time. I've come close to tail the pool and my fly is gliding over the hot spot where I saw the fish moving earlier.
That was a nice take, but I'm surprised there was no break on the surface when the fish took. I suspect my fly is fishing a lot deeper than I planned for. Perhaps the flow swinging to the tail is forcing the intermediate tip to fish deeper than I thought. I'm not complaining, I'm glad to be into a fish. This fish was lying just a couple of metres above the croy, about midway across the river. I think it must have been resting around two feet of water, but I've never understood why they like to lie there. I would have thought the fish would prefer to come into the deeper water further up the pool and be more camouflaged. If anybody who's watching has any ideas on why they do this, I'd be interested to hear your thoughts in the video comment section. I can see the fish gleaming in the water as it turns and fights to get free. It's a beautiful bar of silver, typical of what you expect to catch here at Tolkien at this time of the year. It's putting up a great fight and I'm enjoying this fish. It's good when it all comes together and the tactics pay off. I'm using a 3 and 3 quarter inch Farlex click and pull reel, so drag is applied by slowing the spool manually. It takes a bit of getting used to, but I really like the sensitivity that you can apply. Modern seal drags can often be an all or nothing scenario, and I've lost many a fish by applying too much drag too soon. I hope we get this one in, but if it comes off then it's not a big deal. I've done the hard work and got the best of it with a take and a decent scrap, so if it gets off I'll be disappointed, but it's not the end of the world. Roddy the Tolkien head gilly is heated at the right time as always. He has a habit of doing that for me and I hope he continues. I like the way Roddy is so relaxed. He's not stressing the fish at all and he's keeping me calm as well. That's how to do it. Notice he doesn't try to grab the line or the leader. He waits for his opportunity and just grabs the fish by the tail. Great work. keeping this fish in the water till it fully recovers. While we wait, we can take a minute to admire its beauty. There's no denying the appeal of a space salmon with their silver flanks gleaming in the sunlight. The power of these fish is astounding, and it's a joy to be able to release these remarkable creatures back to the wild. It's been another unforgettable visit to this extraordinary river and the fabulous setting of Tolkien Estate. I hope to be able to come here and cast a fly to these magnificent fish for many years to come. I would encourage anyone with an interest in fly fishing for salmon to visit the Spey and find out for yourselves why this river is held in such high regard by so many anglers from all over the world. Mm -hmm.